All right, I'm Matt. This is our patient Roman today, and we're just going to be doing a brief uh, thoracolumbar assessment. So, first thing we need to do is palpate some landmarks. We're going to start by first palpating the C7 spinous process. So I can go right around in here, ask my patient to flex, and back. And right here we have C7. It's the first cervical vertebra that does not move on flexion. Next, we need to palpate the S2. So we're gonna go find our iliac crest over here on the sides. We're gonna go medial and inferior. And right here, just lateral to the spine, I can find our, our uh, where S2 should be at the PSIS. So we're gonna mark this segment here. Now that we've got C7 and S2 marked, first we're gonna start with some uh, goniometer or inclinometer uh, range of motion. So first we're gonna do our thoracolumbar flexion. So we're gonna have one inclinometer at C7. The other is gonna be right over S2. We're gonna even these out here to zero degrees. And I'm gonna ask my patient to bend over and flex, touch his toes. So we have a total of 40 degrees at the lower inclinometer and 105 at the top. So we have 65 degrees of thoracolumbar flexion, which is pretty much ideal. The uh, regular value for thoracolumbar flexion is 60 degrees. Um, next, we're going to do trunk lateral flexion. So same thing again with the inclinometers, but this time I'm going to be at uh, one's going to be at S2. And the other one's gonna be at T1 this time. So we're gonna level these out to zero degrees. Can I have you put your yeah, arm on the side of your leg and follow your finger down the side of your leg to your left? So we have no motion at the bottom and we've got 25 degrees at the top. So we're just under our normal range of 30, or, uh, 25 degrees of trunk lateral flexion. All right, now that we've got our uh, range of motion analyzed, we're going to uh, do a toe touch test. So can I spin you around this way? So with our toe touch test, we're gonna basically, um, this is a muscle length test for the hamstrings and the trunk extensors. So can I have you bend over and touch your toes? This is a combined motion at the hip, the spine, and the shoulder girdle. Ideally, our patient should be able to touch the ground He's a little bit short of that, so we can quantitatively measure this difference here. And we're about 12 centimeters, 12 centimeters shy of him being able to touch the ground, so we'd expect some tightness or shortness in the hamstrings or the bag extensors. Um, lastly, we're going to do some manual muscle tests. So can I have my patient come over here? All right, so first thing we're gonna to test today is the rectus abdominis. So we're basically just gonna have my patient uh, do some trunk flexion here. Um, the therapist does not need to provide any stabilization or resistance. So to begin with, the patient's arms are by his sides. We're gonna ask him to do a crunch. And we see his inferior angle of the scapula clear the table. So that's a grade of three. Can I have your arms over your chest? Perfect, same motion again. And again, that inferior angle of scapula clears, so that's a grade of four. Lastly, his arms are by his head. These stay parallel. Can you do another crunch? And inferior angle clears. Perfect. Our last test now is going to be testing the right internal oblique, left external oblique, by having our patient do a combined flexion and rotation. Can I have you bring this shoulder to that hip? Perfect. That's a grade of three. That inferior angle clears. Next, arms across the chest. And same motion. Again, the inferior angle clears, that's a four. And lastly, arms by your sides, and bringing that same motion again. And the inferior angle clears, it's a grade of five for his right internal, left external oblique. And that concludes our assessment on thoracolumbar.